Good morning everyone, this is Anne from Odulcina Scrap. I am back today with the first project that I've done using my new kit with the legal size papers and the back to time kit on regular letter size paper. Okay, just a quick update on printing those legal size papers. So I had some comments and, uh, well, they were great for when you have a computer. But if you try to print from a tablet, let's say an iPad, I didn't, I don't know for Windows tablet or other kind of tablets. But from an iPad, you don't have the option to pick the legal size paper. And what it does is that it will try to print this page on the letter size paper and you don't have the option to do fit to page like you would have in Windows so it cuts the design. So knowing that I created a PDF file of the pages and if you print from your tablet from the PDF file then it prints on a letter size paper but it keeps the whole picture so it doesn't cut the bottom and uh, i i guess the top and the bottom it kind of just print the middle section that would fit on the page um if you don't use the pdf version so now if you go back to etsy if you purchase the kit like yesterday and you don't have the pdf files in your download, just go back on Etsy in your downloads and they should be there now and you can download them. If you have any issues, contact me, but the PDF version is now available for the three kits that I've listed yesterday, the back in time and those two legal size papers. So I did a couple of tests, printed just one page at a time or multiple page from the PDF I also tested if I put legal size paper and I print from the PDF from the tablet, what happens? It's, and this is the result, it left a big gap of white there. And if I compare to the letter size paper, it's the same size. So it really didn't take care that I had legal size paper in my printer or not. So don't waste any legal size paper if you print from a tablet using the PDF file. There you go. I love that format actually. It is, you have slim pages that if you cut the sides, it's an interesting format for any junk journal creations or ephemera or even doing those um, deeds. And you're going to see that I'm using one of that page uh, in the deed that I'm going to create with you. And I did those faux deed, which is like a, a stash of old document, like legal documents. So, of course, I'm, I'm using all kinds of papers in it, but look how cute it is. So... Because we have the legal size papers, they are longer, right? So I can take a regular size paper and have longer papers. And then I can get a whole, a whole line of different sizes, different length of papers. And uh, when you fold them, they look not so skinny or small so how you do that and i'll do one with you but i'll show you those that i've done you need brads i had those bigger brads which seems okay but honestly if you don't have any brads you could staple instead of using brads or you could even use a little tread like in the old times and you do let's say two two holes on each side and you use a tread or just one tread in the corner like they used to do in the old times as well. So there's different ways that we can play on how to attach 
those deeds, but um, I did them all with Brad's yesterday night, and uh, I'll do some with you. Maybe I, I should just do the different ways with you right after showing you those. So here you go. I've used the wallpaper. I've used, it's kind of a, an old book that is kind of big, bigger than usual. And uh, it, it feels like a dictionary, but it is not. I have those tracing paper. They usually come in pads and the pads are a little bit bigger than letter size paper. So they are perfect. This is the um, legal size paper, but you can see I removed the white border. See this one here, I left the white border because I cannot print borderless. So for this one, what I've done is I took my ruler and I teared the excess and it makes that edge that is, that looks, can we see well? Look even here, like it's been damaged and it's all good. I use the Vintage Photo Distress Ink from Tim Olds. Then here I had that really old um, music sheet from a book and I liked it because it was a little bit larger than the papers and it was all damaged on the side. So when we go, when we have a look on the sides, it's kind of all perfect. And then I put my swatch sampler and the last page, you put it on the other side. So the design is at the exterior. So when you fold it, you have the design showing up, right? So you want the design at the outside and the other page, the different side, so you can see them all. So this is one example and I did this one too, so I used this big legal size paper, but I didn't remove the white border on the sides because it's cute too with the border. And then when we reverse, I had those fancy brads that I had for many years from my scrapbooking time. This one, it's from the Back to Time kit, the letter size format and I just use you know I cut to keep just a document this is not the same but you could use it as the same right so you can use those documents uh, as its own and it, it gives you like a, an interesting format that is smaller than the letter size paper right because you want a smaller document there and then you you increase and you you play with you you still include smaller between bigger but at least for the first two or three you want to increase in size so you have that cascade effect so here you go that's what i did and then it's a tracing paper that has some designs printed on from the coffee that that gorgeous legal paper and I teared the end because it would have been this size the legal size paper but the the last portion was all white well no writing so I teared it and um, did the distress ink so we really have the cascade effect there then again that music sheet book that was kind of the first page of the book but it's so damaged that i really love it then a legal size paper that i removed the border and inked it again that kind of documentary dictionary pages that are bigger than usual and the last page is the other side so we have the design at the back. I had so much fun to do them. 
so much fun. This is my favorite. That wallpaper is gorgeous. You have no clue how many times, how many, I would not say hours, but minutes, probably close to an hour, just to manipulate the original wallpaper. The green was really, really dark. The flowers were red, not pink at all. And uh, I had to manipulate that design to make it to my taste. Soft colors like that. I really like it. And when I look at it, I see all the amount of work I've put on. All right, so I used it as the last page. And then when we go inside, this is a real vintage. It's kind of a gauge for like a loan. So that person, and it's an 1876. And it's a loan of $7. And you would pay 7.5% annual if not paid when due. So, and there's little notes here that has been handwritten. And it was so fragile that I added a faux tape. This is another technique that I've done. And I'll link um, the tutorial video in the description below. It's really, really easy to do. You need scotch tape and you need alcohol ink that you can find on Amazon easily or any scrapbooking um, business. So this is an original one, but I can tell you in advance that I am converting those. I have a huge book of those. Some are blank, some has some writing, some has some comments on the sides there. And uh, I am working on another digital kit of old little ephemera like that, that you can reproduce. And of course, I want you to be able to print them this size and smaller if you want, but you'll, you'll be able to reproduce them. And I'm, I think if you print them on uh, coffee stain papers, you're going to have a similar effect. So I'm going to work on that. I'm going to try that. But this one is a real one, a real antique receipt. And I just love the idea that it's a long strip like that. But honestly, we could replace that with a strip of wallpaper like that. Or any other kind of document. This is my coffee stain design page. I have a kit for that. Actually, I'll link all the kits that I've used in the description below. The tracing paper that has been coffee stained. This is an old... Um, music sheets from a book and I love that the side is all uh, little holes that legal paper document that we have in the legal uh, pages kit this this journal so cute I removed the border and I inked the sides so so cute so you can see that I played with the sizes and different papers, different colors. I love that blue. I forgot to say that was a recipe from my mother-in-law. And these were on two different pages, like it was recto verso, um, the recipe. And I merged them together to create that long page but I wanted I love the blue and that stain there <laughs> I loved it so much that I wanted to include it in the kit and this last page here of those ladies and you can add some text here on the sides and the last page is the wallpaper so I'll just make sure I fold it correctly because it's a true antique one and you can bet that next to these, next to this video, I'm going to create something that matches that. And they're going to go on 
in my Etsy store. So if you wish to own one of those, they're going to be available eventually somewhere in September. All right, so now I'm ready to play and do some with you. So I'll show you what I have. I have on my left here all the pages from the three kits that I still have uh, that I didn't use in the other um, deeds that I've done. I gathered a couple of pages that are just coffee stained. They are just printed on white paper, but they would be really better if I had the version printed on coffee stained paper. It is coffee stained paper, but if you take that print on a coffee stained paper that you ironed on your in your printer, it makes it like on a really thin paper that makes the noise and everything really gorgeous so i have those then i had little pages from a book they are square and i coffee stained them they are related to the wine process and fine wine descriptions and stuff like that but i love the uh, the pictures so i kept them i have this big ledger paper and I think if I just uh, fold the corner like that let's say I can maybe include it anyway I'll see if I do something with that I have those typewriter uh, that big book that I have so I took a couple of pages they are exactly they are legal size paper so I should scan some and make them available. We could literally reproduce that. I never think about that. Eventually, I'll have a th another kit of legal documents. So the these will be in. Then I have an old book that I took from my parents' library. They didn't use it. And I love the, the flowers. So I might use one of those pages... Then, of course, I have tracing papers, different sizes. So some are bigger, some are smaller, some with designs or not. This one, it's kind of, I bought it uh, on Amazon and they were saying it's tracing paper. But honestly, it's more tissue paper. They were really, really cheap. So I kept them and I coffee stained some. Like, you cannot really coffee stain them one by one. It's so thin. So I coffee stained them like a little pile together. That's why I have more white and just some stains here and there. But you know what? I love it. So this is really, really thin. I need to be... It's really delicate. But I'm going to use them. Again, those um, pages that I was using in the ones that I've done and I have a pile of different music sheets from books that I have so I'm going to use some from there all right so first we need to decide which page will be the cover and this one needs to be a legal size paper So I think I'm going to go with this one. That would be perfect. So I'll put it this way because this will be my cover and yeah, this way. So when I'll fold it, this will be inside and this will be the top. I will leave the, um, the border there. So then maybe I can, and I don't overthink the process. Again, I'll just layer some pages that I want to use. And then I'm going to place them here and there. So I just go like that. I'm going to use that tissue paper with a bigger tracing paper. I love this one. That was the... 
the top paper of the little pile of tissue paper and I've put a mat on it that is all kind of a grid and it created tons of folds and it has the pattern printed on so this is in my stash and I'm keeping it for something special are you like me <laughs> I just can't use it for now I still need to keep it in my stash okay now I'm gonna pick one of those pages because I love that it has holes there and um, I just don't want those faces and I don't know I'll try to grab one that is mostly just text like this maybe or this one okay you know what I'm gonna do something I'm gonna take that one I'm gonna take I have an idea you might do the same on your side I have I want to hide that guy so you know that sheet that comes with the back to time back in time kit we have all those girls and ladies there and I'm thinking can I just glue one there or should I match should I match the size of the guy there or maybe the piano would be a good fit it's already the good size Ooh. all right I'm gonna use this one and I'm gonna trim it so I don't want to cut her head so I'm gonna go like this and here, I'm going to see where I need to cut again. I'm going to cut a little bit her dress. But she's definitely be more cute than the guy. There you go. And I could ink the sides, but I won't. Just because it's so white there that I think it's going to look awesome just like that with no ink. But it's, you do your own preference. So if you have a portion of a paper that you don't like, you can hide it with another picture. Just trying to, to be straight. There you go. That's a hack. I'm hacking those pages. <laughs> it's cute. Eh? All right, keep going on and music sheet. And maybe I can put a bigger one there. I'll just grab those two. I love this one. I love this one. Okay, so let me show you how I tear the sides. And... Um, and ink it. So I'll put those papers aside to come back to it. And I'll make some space on my table. And I'll just do one. If you're not a beginner, you can skip a couple of seconds of this video. Um, because you probably know how to do it. But I realize there's a lot of new people into that junk journal world and they don't necessarily know how we do the little techniques so i use a ruler i love the metal ruler because it's a little bit more i find it cuts better like the edges are more sharp i guess so i put the ruler on the line where i want to cut i hold firmly and i tear then I change my position here of my fingers to make sure I hold firmly under where I'm gonna tear. And again, I move my fingers. So as you can see, I go step by step. If you try to go too quick, especially when the border is small like that, 
you end up the the paper just moves so i'm placing like this and i'm just following the line and i go section per section like that i move my fingers and i keep going on like that then i'm gonna place it back correctly And what I love about this kind of tearing with the ruler, you can see, let me place a white paper there. You can see that the tearing is not straight like if you use scissors. Of course, you could use scissors as well to trim the uh, the border. But I love that it's, it's kind of, we can see it's been teared. Then when you ink it, you just go lightly and look at the difference. I'll put the white there again. Now we can see a little bit better the border and it's all, it looks vintagey. So I'll do all that and then I'll come back. You don't need to, sh to see more than that to understand the process. I can tell you, this is my favorite paper from the two kits this one i love it <laughs> we all have a favorite one eh? so this one is my favorite i'm gonna place it okay now i think i have enough because you don't want it to be too bulky this is already maybe a bit too bulky so i'll see i think i'm gonna finish with this one then maybe I can place a music sheet that is kind of a different size. This typewriter document. I'm going to remove this. This paper is really thick. I'm going to remove that. Okay, so maybe this one. Um... I love this one too. See, I, I've put the doilies. It's in another kit that I have. This one. So maybe what I can do here, they are kind of all the same size. This one is a bit longer, so I'll start with this one. This one and this one, they're... Oh, this one is a little bit longer too. And this one, what I can do, let me change. I'm going to use a different one. I'm going to use one of those two papers and I'm going to tear it, let's say, like that. If I tear it like that, and I'm trying to create some waves while I tear so it's not it's interesting and of course if you tear it you need to ink the sides a little bit and sometimes I, I add a little bit on the sides you don't need to ink the top you won't really see it okay so this page is ready what about this and then I wanted to use that delicate paper okay now I wanted to use that paper so I'm thinking maybe I should put it just on top of this cute lady here kind of protecting it there you go we're gonna have a couple of layers like that this is those uh, legal size paper printed on letter size papers so of course to keep the proportion you have some white space on the sides but at least you can print the whole page and it's kind of a long slim page when you trim it so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use this one yeah let's use this one and i'm gonna do the same way i'm gonna trim the sides 
let me put that aside again and I'm going to trim the sides and ink it like I did for the legal size paper so you can see this one has been printed on white I could maybe print on both sides or print on coffee stain paper that would be awesome too but it was just a test so for me Ah, uh, see, I didn't place my fingers correctly and it slightly moved. Even if I know the trick, I still do the mistake from time to time. And when it happens, I just cut it with the scissors at the end. That excess. So this excess here, I'm going to take my scissors and just... Cut straight and ink it. Okay, so my page is ready to be used. And what I love is that it's a slim page. Longer, it feels longer than a regular paper. And it's thinner and you have all the design on it. So honestly, that legal size paper... You can print it on letter size paper with a fit to page option or use the PDF file that will print it perfectly like that right away. From your tablet, it's going to work fine or from a computer and or you can print it on the legal size paper. So you have both options if you if you play a little bit with the files. So let me put them all kind of together. This is my top, so that's why I'm doing that. So they are they are all flat. This tissue paper do not move like the others. So I'll place it correctly. And I'll go back like this. How about this? Okay, I don't like this. There's This is too big, so I'm going to tear this here. Showing the wallpaper behind. I'm going to ink it a little bit too. Just slightly, just quickly, lightly. There you go. Maybe I'll remove that music sheet there yeah i'll remove the music sheet there's already another one here so and it feels to me like i should maybe tear another one so i'm gonna tear the tissue paper just a little bit I'll try. I'm trying to ink it. Yeah, it works a little bit. Okay, let's try again. Place those papers together. And it looks like that. I like it. So we are ready to poke the holes. So if I add brads, I would just poke the holes there but I'm gonna use a tread just in the corner here so what I'm gonna do is I am going to use my little cu cushion here I'm gonna do two holes one like that and maybe one like that and i'm gonna make them a little bit bigger actually i can zoom in okay like this and then i'm gonna use a tread i have two options here i have that wax linen thread that I use to do my uh, junk journal signatures and it's green so I love it with 
this green here, or I have this big roll of thread. I think it was for butchers to wrap around the meat. Anyway, I think I'll go with this one. It looks really vintagey. And uh, I'm gonna need a needle to thread this. Got it. All right, let me go through the holes. If my, yeah, it, it, it didn't move, I think. Okay, I'll go one by one. My paper's moved, so. Okay. And now I'll come back. Here we go. I'll just make sure I don't have a loop there. And we need to tie it, but not too tight, I think. So I'll bring the knot here at the top and I'll do a double knot. I'm not going too tight on the thread. I'll do a third knot because it seems like it moves. This is kind of locked. Cut the excess. Oh, I guess I could cut shorter. Look at that. So we have this document with the thread here on the corner and we can really go through the pages. I actually like it when it's uh, just holding the papers in the corner because you have more access to all those pages. Yeah, I like it. Okay, I'm gonna make that. And now I just need to fold. So I'm gonna place back my papers correctly. And I start with the top and I decide which length I want for the first fold and then I fold. What you can do to help you is uh, use a bone folder or and then holding this side, I'm gonna come here and then fold again, making sure I'm aligned I'm gonna use the bone folder again. And then I put this flap inside like this. There you go. We have this as the outside. And when we open, we have this cute deed. Isn't it fun? Oh boy, I am in love with those new ephemeras that I can create now because I have those legal size paper, really fun. So I hope you enjoyed and uh, stay tuned. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do more things with those kits. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.